up, guys? How's everyone? Good, good. Yeah, good. How are you? I'm good. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so uh, let's kick it off. Thanks, Nicole, for, for sending in the, the final uh, link. Um, yeah, sure thing. Uh, yeah, there are just like a couple of things we need to just sort out with the prototype. But um, I think if you share that prototype link, um, it should show the, like everything, as far as I know. I mean, it changes in real time as we make changes to the prototype itself in the actual file. But yeah, I think it should be good. The only uh, thing that I uh, saw is that the link opens the actual library, not the the logging, uh, or not the search screen. Uh, can we update that to to start from the very beginning of the flow? So uh, I yeah. think that like last night. I don't know if you saw it, but I'm, my hope is that being that I fixed it, and also Nicole, I moved the starting point, so yeah. it should be going. Maybe we could take a look now. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I think, um, wait, where's the starting point? The starting point should be in pre-search, but oh, it's it got moved to, uh, wait, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> I could have sworn it was on your screen. Oh, it's over screen. by where Carmen is, it's over here. Oh, OK. <laughs> um, I'm just going to throw it here and I think that should do it. Do you want it? Um, yeah, I think that fixed it. I think it's good. Okay, yeah, it fixed it. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. I can share my screen. We can like go through a prototype. Let me uh, also want to make sure that it actually starts on that. It should though. Um, all right. So this is, okay, so this is the original file, but if I press play, Oh, it's on my other monitor. Okay. Okay, yeah, there you go. So yeah, so this should be that same link I share, like it's the same link like over here if I copy the link um through like share prototype. Um it should be the same one. And now like we fix the the like it starts from the pre-search um screen. So that should be good. Um but yeah, so their prototype right now it goes it corresponds to all the tasks that are currently in like yeah, outline. But I don't think script. the link that you shared in Slack opens this because it opens the library for me. Oh really? Why don't you share it again? So um, I'm just curious, when did you look at that? Because the I think what she was saying a moment ago was like so she could give you the link at any like let's say on Monday and then you could see it and it's broken. Um, no, like I'm, something I'm just opening it you... right now and it still shows. Oh really? Mm. Okay, that I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know too. Uh, let me actually let me do it again. Share, copy link. It should only, yeah, it should only be view. You shouldn't have any like sort of capabilities of editing. But let me try sharing it again on Zoom. Um, I see that people are on it, or is that just me, Kayla and Connor? <laughs> okay. Does it show? Um, the starting the actual starting screen with like pre -search. oh yeah this one does this it, one does okay it's like large I'm not sure if that's so the... if you go to options and you in the upper right hand corner there will be an option oh, for options you press that then you go to i think it's width yep yeah width. yeah right now it's like if you see from my screen right now like there's open space but just just that's because like their wireframes are currently at 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution my monitor right now is larger than that so i mean technically i can fix that and like, just adjust it like oh my bad there it is uh but yeah is this... I, i'm really curious just to pause you do you think it's better when we're doing user testing to just have them fit it because this whole thing of like having to scroll down to run a search, I find annoying. Not that they're running the search now, but if I'm in width and I wanna see what's going on on this page, I have to scroll. And I think the intention is that if it's at fit, they can see everything and I don't know. I'm gonna try it at fit. So right now I put it to fit. Um, yeah, I just clicked on fit. Looks yeah. way better. 
So, all right, let's try it out from here. If I click on fix, but it's at fit right now. With you. All right, so you click on enter the search tags. Anything after this, we, um, it shows a drop down to HTTP. Uh, I believe the next part is from filters. They ask them to input, uh, mention the sex of female and, and case control. And it, it adds the uh, tags. I think, oh, we close, we close the filters and then we run the search and then move to this page. Um, so this is how it looks when it's unfit. Let me check real quick. How does it look with width? Okay, it's the same thing. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think we can keep it to fit then. Um, I think maybe it looks the same for you on width because of your screen because yeah. I'm on a 13 inch and admittedly that, I mean, that's small, I guess, but. Is there a way it's to make it weird. as a default setting when you're sure? Um, if you put it on fit and you does the link change? Does the URL change based on what not, option it's set at? I can try real quick. I'm not sure because from my experience, like when I shared the prototype link, it was always by default at 100%. And I remember I would like from time to time, I would just test it out. I would change it to width and I would still share the prototype. And I don't think it's a default. We I could mean, also put this in the script, by the way. Yeah. Like, I didn't put that in the script for my other project, but I, I had to mention it verbally. <laughs> like, as I, when I shared with them the uh, prototype link, I, I just said it verbally, like, oh, um, like, real quick, can you, like, change the options to fit or, like, fit scale, uh, something with width. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I tried, I sent, like, another link to the prototype. I'm not sure if that changed anything. I think it works because in the URL it has to scale down and for me yeah, it opens. It works. Oh, cool. Okay. We can make sure it's kept that back in. All right, cool. Um, I guess that's the link to send out the one you just put. Right, right. Okay, nice. I didn't know that. All right, cool. So, but yeah, um, in regards to like these particular screens, uh, there weren't that many changes that, like, I was emailing on this side of the prototype, but mm, let me run through it real quick. I think some of the only things that I changed were initially we had the, we talked about that little pop out icon in order to open up that site, like, overlay on the right. Uh, but instead, we just changed it so that you can just click on this and it just pops that out. Um, uh, what else? Is there anything else? I don't think there was any, there was another thing that I changed. Oh, initially, like, it didn't have, like, if you were to look through the abstract and then it had um, these highlighted terms, like, initially, they were just bolded. I didn't have the highlight, like, on top of them, and I just added like, those highlights so that they can easily distinguish those terms. Um, I believe there's a third thing, but I don't, I, can't, I, can't really, I think it was probably a really small thing, honestly. Um, what else is there? Well, anyway, let me run through the prototype. I think there are just certain things like spacing that would just need to be um, fixed, but those are just really small things. Um, just because like prior to this call, we were talking about alignment, um, having the logo from the Y like aligned with like uh, the edge of like the filters here. And also like that also means changing the spacing around here. So we can easily fix that if I were to add if I were to select these three um, papers and I add to the library, um, and then I would have the option to navigate to the library and it shows uh, the post search phrase. So that this is the library page. And this is how it looks when it's fit um, on my screen at least, which is, I think it's bigger than like the other screens, but I'm not sure if like, you know, it might be different for other people's um, screens because mine is a fairly big monitor, so. <laughs> Hey, Nicole, um, there's an edit on that. We have to fix. Um, was there another screen? Yeah, yeah, there is. Hold on. OK, yeah, sure. Um, like, if I click, if it, goes, it should go to this screen, right? Right, right. OK. We okay. move the arrow. Yeah, it would just, yeah, it would just need to move this one. Okay, cool. Let me go back to that. Um, this is the one, right? Yeah. Uh, let me just try it again. Uh, library, navigate to that. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it, it navigates to 
um, the new screen that uh, Carmen was working on. Um, yeah, sorry, this is just me, my big monitor, so I don't, I'm not sure if it's too small for you all. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't want to change it. Okay. I mean, I just zoomed in a bit so you can see like how it looks, but um, but yeah, I don't know, Carmen, did you want to speak more about like this particular screen or? Uh, no, just, I guess um, what's new is you could add um, library name. I need to add that button actually. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you could change the policy on the sharing setting. And then also share library. So and the share library would would just open the the search results, right? I'll try. It will, it will probably open the next page. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I see. What would the next page be for for share? Hmm. Let me go back to that real quick. I'm sorry. Like this. Hmm. Okay. So if I click on share, hmm. um, so it's like a, a pop up. Yeah. Well, you could share by link or email. And I guess I need to make a page for email so you could type it in mm -hmm. in this email. Um, I, I kind of am wondering if there's a, a pattern that people are already used to that would make more sense. So I'm wondering if when we go on like PubMed, when you press the share button, does it give you like social icons? like? ability to tweet the link in a condensed format or I I think so let me uh I'll, let's see um so there are options to share so it's on Twitter Facebook how does it look when I click on this so if it's a link permanently it just automatically it gives me a link and it automatically highlights for me and I can just copy and I can just paste it anywhere else. Um if I do share okay I see not showing my Twitter but anyway it goes to the Twitter page and then uh, I, would assume, uh, okay. I would assume for like Twitter and Facebook it just directly goes to so maybe let's just make the copy link uh thing. This right here. Yeah. Okay. So would that effectively eliminate the email feature? Yeah, I think that's mm -hmm. too much. Okay. Yeah, because they could just take the, if it opens up something like this, they could just take this link and share it in the email anyway, as they're yeah. um, drafting it, so. Okay. But yeah. Um, also, when I close this, it goes to this screen, so I would just need to. Um, I want to try out this interaction over here where you press on this button. Like if I click on the specific library name. Okay, so it just goes to this right here. Okay. Um, I'm really curious what the search bar looks like on on pages like this. Like, like actually. No, I mean, it's just an entry field, so there wouldn't be anything. It would just be the search bar and then the search icon, because that's like what's consistent with the home page. Mm -hmm. and then, like, but I'm wondering if when someone wants to run a search from another entry point, so like, let's say you want to run a search on this, this page right here, are you able to run a search while you're also looking at your library, meaning you have your library and then you have the search bar and then you search something. Should the search bar have the same feature like as if it has a search icon, which indicates you're running it and then the like feet the, the what is it called? Oh, filters, duh. Mm -hmm. uh, like should it just simply look identical to what's already on the home page or should it be or yeah, the home page, I guess you can call it or should it be like. Yeah, I guess that's the only thing that makes sense because I know on some sites, when you're running a search like that, it's just like, 
and all hmm. I don't know but this is different my, my example is like let's say I'm on Quincy for example or I'm on New York Times when I want to run a search from a page where I'm already reading an article let's say I don't have the same um, ability I don't think to add features or filters rather until I get to the search page itself which is already I mean that's already designed out you did that Nicole so mm -hmm. um I forgot why I brought this up <laughs> right, no, well. I want to make sense of it uh, let me jump back real quick because I think so mm -hmm. let me find it okay so initially this is like an old sort of thing I included like this wouldn't be here but anyway like um because I was designing like how to include the search bar like taking like like what you were designing here and including it here and how that would look so mm -hmm. initially um I mean ignore the articles like I said initially you had like this filters option and then like if you click on it it looks very similar to like what you have like in the pre-search phase uh, the, the filters just kind of like slide down the bottom the reason why I removed this was because they already had access to all this, like all that over here. Mm -hmm. So it was redundant to include the filters here, which is why like that filters, um, but is not included there. Mm -hmm. However, if we were to do something like that, like in a page such as this, like a uh, post search, um, I don't know, maybe that would be included because there's no access to the filters. So I wonder if like it would be easiest to just have like the search bar on the post on any post search screen or anything that's outside of like what happens when you're getting your results themselves to just have the search bar but this like functionality where you're entering a term and then you get related terms um like not based on frequency but based on like their relationships to the terms themselves um yeah i hope i you, that made sense like that feature should still be there Mm -hmm. um but because i think it's still like yeah like the <laughs> i can't talk today no it's okay. okay yeah yeah so i think that having the features button doesn't is obsolete that's just my opinion but i don't think that it's something that would not be functional i just think that they can enter a term and then run a search and be able to decide on filters once they're on the search results Page. This page. That was what I was wanting to say. Okay. But as far as like right now, the way how we have like hydroxy, I can't read chloroquine, um, or and whatever that is, all of those things, <laughs> um, other than the filters, I think that they should still be able to engage with the search bar that way. Where if they enter in hydroxychloroquine, they're not just going to get like hydroxychloroquine, um, like study or like related terms in that way but the relationship between the terms has to like be maintained throughout because of how it's structured i don't know if that makes sense does it make sense i think it makes sense to me so like basically what you're saying is like no filters just keep it like keep the, the search as it functions right now yeah like this screen right here with all the like rec like these things like but just the, no filters yeah for the yeah. post search screen Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that yeah, that makes sense to me. <laughs> I mean, I should have it the same as what you have on this screen. I love the search on top. Mama, where are you? Um, yes. <laughs> no, same as yours. Yeah. I'll yeah. just copy and paste it into mine. Yeah. So essentially, it would be the same thing as they like add another term to search, like searching for another term, then it would show this drop down over here, um, but no filters. Like, so yeah, it's basically the same thing what I have here. Because like you said, when they run the search, they can interact with the filters later on, which will be in this, like, the screen anyway with the search results. So, yeah. Cool. cool. Okay. Um, yeah. Was there anything else um, that we needed to mention? I'm going to go back to the prototype. Let's see. Oh, this is okay, yeah. Um, does anyone have any questions like so far? Um, yeah, I mean, 
so far just things like we've had probably just some really small things we need to fix with the prototype itself and the screens uh in regards to things like 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 the script um the survey and also the overview slides um i mean from what it sounds like those are pretty much done too right like kayla you also, you showed us the slides from earlier and they were good too so uh, i can show them now actually if there's no questions on the prototype we i can move on to that because I, I don't think I've gone over them before. I just finished them today anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but before we do that, I just want to make sure that the, do we know what we're doing next as far as the prototypes? Are the prototypes like done or what's up? I yes. Think. Yep. I know. What to do. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, like for me, with the prototype, it was just a matter of like just testing it out and just seeing if things are like, you know, if they're not like as you're scrolling down, if things are things that are supposed to stay sticky, like they actually stay sticky, if that makes sense. But those are just really like small things. Uh, you know, it's like a matter like what I was planning to do after is just um, just running through the prototype and make sure making sure it, you know, it works the way it's supposed to, if that makes sense. So, okay. yeah, cool. Okay, nice. Is, um, um, quick question. Sure. It, is this prototype because I know right is it linked up between like this pre-search phase and the search phase yet is that all linked up because this prototype starts on the search section yeah um, it, that, it is linked now yeah yeah that got fixed so I think Kayla shared the the I think the last uh, I don't know if you came in when I shared it. I was but probably I was probably too late. Sorry guys. That's okay. I'll I'll send it again and then you can take a look. Uh, this one should start on the the first screen and it should also be fit properly yeah. so it doesn't look weird. Right. Yeah. So that last uh yeah the very last link that Kayla shared that's that, that's the link. <laughs> so because when I click on okay, it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, when I click Please on it. Let me know if anything else doesn't make sense um, and I'll, I'll fix it. So. Yeah. Nice. It's a lot of people. Okay, anyway. Um, but yeah, does anyone else have any questions regarding the prototype itself or any of these screens? I think, I feel like I'm going to have a question. Let me just look really quick. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does this screen have a stroke for any reason? Is this a specific interaction that has a stroke for? That uh, when you click on one of these papers and it opens up the overlay, it this is just meant to indicate like it's this one that's selected and um, open. I like sense. that. That's yeah. really cool. <laughs> um, okay, wait. No, I think I'm clear here. I just had a thought about. I'm gonna follow you. Not, not, not that this is particularly important, but um, the logo moves around sometimes. So the the when the logo is closer in, that's the where we want it to be. We I think we just made the the correct margin on one page, and then the rest of the pages have to have the um, three match. They just need to match that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because that's like, a good point. It's just I'm I'm just literally click. You know, when you're in the search section, I'm going through it now. And then once you click the like the tick box to pick one of the things, when you move between them, like the the navigation on the right hand side shifts a bit, and the and on the left hand side the uh, it's not that it matters because I obviously know in the long term it needs to be stationary, but it's one of those weird distractions. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. I think they just all have to be. Um... They just have to be the same as the one that's closer in because that one has the the margin is exact on each side. A uh, quick because yeah, the that 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 margin matches where the margin for the um the filters are, so it sort of feels consistent in shape. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, I have a quick question about the sign up, sign in. Can we just have it say sign in and then, or like log in? It doesn't even matter. But so that if the person goes to the sign in page, which also has to be designed, um, I'm happy to do that. Will you, that will, you do a, will you do a sign in? And then if, you, if you're not sign in, register tab, that's a pretty yeah, standard way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you've not signed in, if you can't sign in, register here, sort of. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree yeah. with that. Um, so 
this page has to be set up so i'll do that i'm happy to do that that's fine and then library that's pretty clear where that goes about um are we about gonna need some are we gonna need some copy for about okay um are we gonna need like somebody to actually write an about uh i wonder if the simpler way of doing this is organizing the copy that's on the existing website and just structuring yeah. it on a page or this is also where it becomes important with like how like where things live because maybe instead of it being about a maybe about would just bring you to the it can be labeled as something else and it can just bring you to the main corona wide page because when you're on the front page for corona wide it does a pretty good job of like giving you i mean uh, well maybe maybe the about could be about literally this tool then maybe just a quick summary mm, the intentions of the true. tool and explaining it almost like a help page but more like an in that's true mm -hmm. um i don't know I, though. that's just spitballing yeah i don't have strong feelings about it so it's up to you guys I guess what's I pretty, easier. I would pretty much limit everything regarding like the goal of this prototype, right? Is this user testing type of setup? Yeah. So everything should be about that, not about like bigger picture or anything. Just again about what what this prototype is about. Maybe links to the script back to the script or something. Maybe to sign up to how to participate. You know, in this user case, you know, something like this. Just not a lot of text. Mm -hmm. Just, just my opinion. I mean, that makes sense. That's yeah. It's outside of the main purview of the test right now. Okay, cool. So why don't we just table that for now? Um, okay. Um, okay. I don't have any other questions. I don't, maybe somebody else does. But I'm good. Thank you. Okay. I'm gonna. Do you want to go through the slides, Kyla? Yeah. Where are they? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Do um, you wanna? Did you wanna share your screen, or I can also just I don't know, <laughs> open up the slides on uh, my screen. I could share my screen. Okay. They're short. They're really, really short. Um, okay. All of the copy that I took is just from the website. So if you would like me to modify it, please let me know. Um, I can read this, but okay. A globally distributed volunteer powered research organization trying to assist the medical community's ability to answer key questions related to COVID-19. Um, that's on the website. Does anybody- It is. Communities is spelled wrong. Okay. It's, oh, it's, ooh, it'd right. be It'd be, be IES. <laughs> it wouldn't be Y. <laughs> Here, I can change that. Um, as far as- uh, it's, it's, it's just one of them things I'm like, I'm, I'm literally doing that with kids these, these days in school, like making sure things make sense. The first thing I went there went, that looks wrong. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, is it? Wrong? It's kind of an ownership. It's an ownership thing as well, so it kind of works like that. Ownership. Yeah. Apostrophe. I don't yeah, know. Rather than plural. Crazy feedback I right now, but I hear like a yeah. lot of white noise in the background. Um. Anyway. Medical, well, being the community is uh, singular, although it refer refers to a plural and it's possessive. I think that this can work because I think medical community is like, this is the adjective that makes this specific enough so that you know what it is, although this is still broad. So I don't know if it. Like I said, it's an ownership apostrophe, so it sort of makes sense as well. Okay. As far as the content, though, does I just pulled again? I just pulled this from what's on the website. Does anyone feel like it should be more specific, less specific? If anything, on are this we going to send these to the user testing group? So the way that um, Nicole and I have done this before is that when we start a user test, a user testing session, we won't necessarily send this to them for them to go through, but we'll have them. We'll 
have this like be the first two minutes or the first like yeah it's about it'll take about two minutes because there's just three slides here um so that they have a general idea of what's going on and then we just go ahead with the rest of the script so if you look at the script right now there's a line where it says I think go through slides in all caps or something like that so that's just like the note for us to know to go through it does that answer your question yeah makes sense cool so that's the slide. And then the next one, um, what we do, Corona-wise working to help researchers answer four scientific questions or tasks of the 10 made available on Core 19. And then I just screenshotted what the tasks are and placed them here. Yeah, um, maybe it's uh, it's actually better to take the, the content from the literature review page that we have on solutions, uh, mm -hmm. or we have mm -hmm. the Fast Grants application just because that will be um, specific to to the actual tool. This here? Uh, yeah, if you click so, in, in the Google Doc. Yeah, that wait, Fast Grants application, okay. yeah. Okay, so... If I you scroll I've... down, there is a project description, yeah, at the very top. There's plenty of content that we can reuse from here. Okay, I'll go through this. What I have right now, as far as like this aspect is just the top line that's on the proof of concept web, um, the proof of concept okay. page. So do you think that this should go into greater depth? Uh, I mean, it's up to you. I'm not really sure how, um... How deep you want to go through these uh, introductory uh, slides but you can add more content from that google doc it's quite extensive okay yeah i think i've seen that one before so i can take a look at it the goal is always to keep it high level um because we of course the the user testing session we want to be mostly about them really interacting with the prototype and identifying like what's going on there um, and this is really just meant to be like, hey, this is what the project is and this is what we're doing. Um, and now we'll like show you specifically what we're doing. So I'm wondering if anything here should be slashed. So um, hmm, what do you think? Because I thought when I put the slide number three is uh, kind of like more about where we started and where the the Kaggle journey and the um, you know, the beginning of COVID started for Corona Y. So maybe let's, uh -huh. let's remove this one. Okay. Yeah. I was think I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, this relevant, was but relevant, but it's not, not, not very relevant anymore. Um, so what if we just kept it to these two? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, I don't know if we need to expand on Corona Y anymore, but, um, like I say, maybe a little bit, a little bit more specificity on the literature review tool, but again, still keeping it pretty high level. Because then it's just like, this is the concept, this is our goal, this is the reasoning behind it, and now we want you to have a look at it so they can understand. Like the, okay. the, the intent, our intention as well to try and help, because then they can feel at least in context. Yeah, I agree as well. We shouldn't have like more than like two slides about just like this setting up, just basically, you know, what is it all about? What we need to do, obviously add the link to website. If a person wants to read more, they're free to go. Otherwise just like straight to what we do in, in, in this user testing side of things. I think it's a bad idea to have like a high level brief explanation of the aim of the project. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, I'm not sure what I could do to make. Hmm. I'm thinking what would make it more specific, like what would be what would make sense to mention there on the second slide. Um, but okay, I hear I hear what you're saying. It makes sense to me. But I mean, like this section which says, with this proposal, we request to support da 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 da. The effort would say strengthen and extend our existing sign. No, okay, that's not good. 
Yeah, I would keep the top uh, where we have the project description. Description. If you scroll up. Yeah. This. Yeah. And then there is, um, if you scroll down, there is proof of concept. What? Um, this here? Yeah, it's just a link to the proof of oh, concept yeah. demo page. I think from my stance, I think it, my opinion right now is to leave it as it is and to go to, yeah, and to just fit it into the user testing set segment as it, as it is right now. Um, because I think the only thing I can think right now to add would be a problem and solution slide, which like typically when I'm like proposing um, what I did for, like if I'm writing a case study on what I did for uh, any project where I was a UX designer, I'm thinking like, what was the problem and what was they trying to solve? And then like, what was my goal? But I'm, I'm wondering like, that's how I would position this. That's like, I think what would make the most sense if I had to add yeah. anything. But yeah, I think that's kind of yeah, the, the high level problem, which is why I said like the high level problem of what we're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. And this is our, our intention to solve it in this particular way. It doesn't have to be detailed, but yeah, definitely. I think we're basically saying the same thing is like, we need to explain what the problem is mm -hmm. in the sense that this sheer amount of data and the sheer quantity of it and the, and the interconnectedness of the data and the ability to get through that data faster and more effectively with more yeah. like... Mm -hmm. those um, I don't. I don't. I'd have to. I'd have, I've, I ain't seen this document in a while. This fast grants. No, I'd that's okay. I think. I'd have to see if there's anything else in there that I'd probably. Say. And I think maybe like because this is helpful, but also when I spent, um, I think we did. Uh, it was a smart thing that we took a step back to make that insights document. Nicole, do you think you could send me the link for it? Because I feel oh, like sure. the prob there's a very clear problem and solution statement in there, and I think we could just pull. I think so. Yeah, let me pull that up real quick. Um, I think it's only giving me the option to comment. Well, anyway, um, I'll go ahead and share it in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is good. Yeah, okay. that's that's uh, yeah, that's kind. Of, them top two paragraphs are kind of. Is this right? Organized by synonyms and hypernyms. I feel like that that was a stretch, but is it right? Uh, yeah, I, I would say related terms. That's how okay. it looks like from the current prototype. Okay, I'm gonna take that out. Okay, cool. So I think I'll just add this in and then that'll be, that'll just be the deck. It'll just be like three slides maximum. Don't, yeah, it doesn't need to be much. It just needs to be a summary of what we are, what we're trying to do. This is what we've got so far. Cool. Okay, that makes sense. Well, that's easy to do. And then, yeah, that's all. So maybe let's uh, let's finalize the the slides, the script, the document, and get everything together. And uh, I remember you guys also had the the email draft, right? Is it? Yeah, in it's in that. It's in the document with the script. Okay. So and maybe we'll we'll reach out to community and just uh, start um, start inquiring if there are. Uh, people in the network or people um, in Corona Y community like Andre and other epidemiologists to start scheduling some calls. Cool. Are we going to use a, a calendar where they can uh, like choose slots from? Is that the plan? Uh, I mean, let's let's try one to one and and see if uh, we can manage that uh, schedule. I don't think 
there's going to be a lot of people on these user testing uh, calls, right, uh, Nicole, Kyla? Um, I don't, I don't think so. The way that we formatted it before is that people are sitting in on the call and listen, and then at the end, if others have questions, they ask. It's just the moderator and the user. Okay. And uh, would would you run these or Nicole? Um, I'm happy to, I can do some of them and you can do some of them, Nicole and Carmen can also do them. Um, I'm happy to like dedicate as okay. much time as needed. Sounds yeah, I'm good. fine with that as well. So the next yeah, step is really good. to get some uh, researchers on board to, to jump on the call, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds like a plan. So I'll write an email yeah. to existing pool of researchers that we've been in contact with. I think Anton also has a researcher uh, in his network that um, that would be relevant, right? Yeah. So I have a friend. She's not exactly an epidemiologist, but she's in a, in a rel related adjacent field. And uh, I'll probably start with her just to kind of polish and iron out like the, the first initial set of like, you know, of roughness of our prototypes. And just again, start with people who, you know, more willing to, to help us out. And then like the next round will be just to like blast to people outside of our current, uh, current network as well. Have, um, has Slava followed up with the idea of maybe pulling in real data? Oh, I, 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 I checked out like those plugins. So in terms of exporting the wireframes into like React components, etc., cetera, uh, I didn't have a lot of success with that. And whatever I was able to like kind of small examples of designs, it all looks like super ugly. I mean, on the under the hood in terms of the code it produces. So I, I'm not sure that's a, it's a good route of like just that shortcutting the, the typical uh, development cycle. Uh, okay. Another point of injecting the real data into Figma itself prototype. I haven't looked at it myself. Uh, maybe it could be interesting, but like, I don't know, is it a, do we want to just like jump it's probably, over it the might not be, it might not, stage? It might not be worth the effort. I don't know though. But but it also would make it look a little bit more polished to be able to see like actual data. It don't have to. Obviously, the search systems don't have to be search systems. But even if we just get like a number of articles that are then related, because then it looks a little bit more like. But I don't know, maybe I mean, that's like, the next, that maybe is that's essentially the next like manual, like no copy pasting of let's say abstracts into prototype. It will be the same Co thing. Copy and yeah, copy five abstracts just so it kind of looks like. Mm. Maybe that might be a, that might be just a, a probably an easier one than trying to work out how to pull real data in. I just Do I, I, I a... thought that's because it was mooted is all. Yeah, no, I mean like I, definitely there is this great stuff to to have like real papers there, but again. At the same time, we're distracting from the, the actual use case, right? The the people when we're interacting with a prototype, then they will be like, "Oh, what's that paper about?" You know, like reading the abstract itself, versus just simply like what we care about is 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 the button is over there. Can they notice that here is a, you know, you can click there or something like that? So, I don't know what what's your ideas in terms of. Uh, what scope of papers or examples to 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 put there? Yeah, I, uh, and we don't want them to feel that hey, the results are irrelevant when the results are just mocked up data from from some subset. Yes. If they want real data, let them look in the prototype of of the, what my candidate did. Like lots of papers over there in the list. Okay, so seems like we we just need to get some people uh, on board and 
have those goals and and we're good with the stage. Cool. Um, quick question. I think so. What I have to do is well, right now I'm trying to modify the screen the the slides the way we were just saying. Um, and then apart from that, I think my segment of the wireframes are done. Um, and then is there anything else that I'm needed for Nicole or Carmen that I'm missing? Do we need to do anything with the script? Is there anything that has to be changed? I've put um, a comment on the introduction start of the script something I mentioned last week and it's something I think needs highlighting. Um, and I've kind of got a comment in there. So maybe some, including some of the parts of the idea of the comment. But I mean, even to it's, we need to lie a little bit in the sense that um, it's really important for the people who are being user tested built to themselves. And how you do that is you tell them that you are not actually part of any of the design and you're just there to do the testing. And that makes them more likely to be like honest. That's important to, for them to actually be honest. If they're worried about hurting people's feelings, then what we won't get honesty out of them. And that's, I think that's a really getting them to talk about what they actually think. Self censoring because the people, because people do that naturally, because, you know, it's tact and politeness. And we don't want polite, we want honest. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Cool. So, so you guys are gonna have to lie and say you didn't design them. That's the only thing you're gonna have to do. Make sure you just, yeah, it was someone else within the team has done these designs. I'm here to just test it and make sure that it's uh, user tested. You can always say that we as a community did that, so. Cool. Um, that's cool. Makes sense. Um, I just wanna show this to you guys before we go. Hold up. What's going on? <laughs> Sorry, give me one second. Okay. Um, this looks long to me, but do you um? Maybe need to remove the word NLP and replace it with uh, natural language. NLP might not be a word that they even understand. Um, sure. Actually, what I just did is I just took that whole thing out and I just put to find relevant articles by related terms. But did you like it the other that way? Makes, no, that makes sense. That's what I mean. The NLP needed either explaining or removing because unless you're into AI and understanding yeah, and honestly, you're gonna be I, like, "What I, does that even mean?" <laughs> yeah, 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 no. And when I was writing it, I was just like, "This is such a stretch" because I feel like I don't know what I'm saying, and that's gonna read well, that way as well. So <laughs> I think it's probably better this way. Um, cool. This does this look long to anybody? So basically, the way that it goes is it's, it's from here, it's here. Wait a minute. Why does this look so much bigger than this text? That's why it looks so gigantic because this is supposed to be 20 and so is this. But anyway, apart from that, now it's um, now it's four slides long. So it goes from here to here to here. Looks good. Okay, cool. Um, I think that this is done. So the slides are done. We can do that edit in the, the script. I don't, I think that's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, and then the, is there anything in the prototype that has to be changed? I think it's just a matter of like, just making sure that, you know, like as you're going through the prototype, things are consistent in terms of like where they are. Cause you know, with the logo of like the run away, like sometimes it would jump. I'm not sure if that was fixed just yet as we were talking, but just basically like checking through the prototype, making sure things work the way they're supposed to. Um, that makes sense. But other than that, I don't think there are many major changes to the prototype itself. It's so just, the, yeah. the next time we speak, what am I coming with? Are we coming with anything or are we in a place where like it's done and now 
the reason why I say this is because I want to know like um well actually I guess that'll that'll be something that maybe someone else is working on as far as getting people and then making dates for user testing. Yeah, because, I think that's okay. the next goal. Yeah. And we can pause the, the weekly call until we have some uh, learnings that we should be discussing. Yeah, it makes sense to just like, yeah, if we, if we have, a, uh, have some calls to talk about and if we, uh, yeah, if there's anything being analyzed from the calls, but until then, I think, yeah, we're pretty much all the prep that we can do is being done minus some tweaks. Well okay. done, guys. Big cool. th two thumbs up. Top, top yep. quality work, everyone. Huge Thank scope. All righty. Well, please let me know if there's anything else that I can help with. Um, just send me a message on Slack. I'm probably going to reply like a day later, but I will see it and I'll reply. And then, yeah, so um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. And we'll keep you Thank updated you. about the, the upcoming calls. Cool. All right. Sounds Thanks, good, everyone. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Have a good Bye. one. Bye.